Hundreds of communities across the U.S. have built their own broadband networks. They had to. Businesses were moving out, and everyone was frustrated with the overpriced, slow access to the Internet. But big cable and phone companies are not embracing competition. They have responded to the spark of competition with a fire hose of dollars and lobbyists to outlaw community networks and state legislatures. In North Carolina, State Representative Avila led the charge for Time Warner Cable, claiming that local governments were predatory. This is a bizarre charge, akin to claiming butterflies are terrorizing tigers. Let's compare Time Warner Cable to one of those predatory governments, Salisbury. Time Warner Cable operates in 28 states and has 44,000 employees. The city of Salisbury operates in one state and has 200 full-time equivalent employees, only a few of which work on broadband. Time Warner Cable serves almost 15 million subscribers, the second largest cable company in the country. Salisbury's Fibrant has around 1,000 subscribers in less than a year of operation. In another three years, it could have 6,000 customers. At that rate, it would give about one customer for every 2,200 of Time Warner Cables. Time Warner Cables revenues in 2010 were $18 billion. Salisbury's general budget is $34 million. It is the difference between having $1,000 and $1. Given Time Warner Cables tremendous size advantage, how could it justify new laws to disadvantage Salisbury? Let's look at the claims. Local governments can issue tax-exempt financing that gets them a slightly lower interest rate when borrowing money to build a network. But the private sector has numerous tax incentives for its network investments that the public sector doesn't, balancing out the two. Local governments could theoretically use tax dollars to subsidize broadband services, but the vast majority do not, and many states prohibit this practice. But cross-subsidizing is common in the private sector. For instance, when Wilson, North Carolina built its fiber optic network, Time Warner kept its prices in Wilson lower than in nearby Raleigh, making up the difference from its operations in 27 other states. And big carriers like AT&T and Verizon can use revenues from mobile phones to subsidize wired network investments. Some have claimed cities could discriminate against competitors in the right-of-way, but that practice is illegal. Local governments don't pay taxes, but since most community networks are owned by municipal electric utilities, they already make a variety of payments in lieu of taxes. Looks like Salisbury's supposed advantages are bogus. Let's see what advantages Time Warner Cable has over publicly owned networks. As we previously discussed, Time Warner Cable is huge compared to these other muni networks. Given the economies of scale from operating in 28 states, Time Warner Cable has tremendous cost advantages from advertising to network monitoring to bulk discounts on physical equipment. The vast number of subscribers means that Time Warner Cable pays less for content and internet peering. Time Warner Cable's network is much older and has been paid off or amortized. Community networks still have to pay the debt from building their newer networks. Time Warner Cable can expand its network anywhere in the state, whereas publicly owned networks are generally constrained to their political boundaries. Time Warner Cable operates in secret, a tremendous advantage. Community networks have to publish their budgets and their strategies are open to competitors. Reviewing this balance of power, how can anyone justify new laws that effectively pluck the wings from butterflies to protect tigers? The obvious lesson is that companies with enormous lobbying power will continue to push for laws to disadvantage potential competitors, no matter how absurd the rationale. After many years of working with communities to build the networks they need, we have identified several reasons why they have been so successful in the face of difficult challenges. Local employees answer their technical support calls. They keep prices low and invest for the benefit of the community rather than Wall Street. They are democratically accountable to the community. They keep more money circulating in the local economy. With all of these local advantages, no wonder big companies are trying to create new barriers to communities building better networks. Communities must have the freedom to choose locally if they should build a broadband network to meet their needs.